So as we continue with uh, uh, solving problems related to inclined plane, here's another condition where we do have friction. Friction is uh, um, do exist in this uh, forward problem. However, unlike in the previous videos where we only have the block and all the force acting on the object will be the internal force, which is your force of gravity, or it's because of the mass of the object that is on the inclined plane. At this point, there is an applied force, external applied force, which is in a form of tension. Something is pulling it upward against the slope of the inclined plane. So that force is force F, and in this question, we are going to figure out the coefficient of friction. So we want to figure out the coefficient of friction. So let us take a look at the condition. Initially, uh, the object is not moving, zero velocity. And after you apply the force, it's still not going to change its condition in terms of uh, motion. So therefore, we can say that there is no motion at all. So there's no change in the condition that it's at rest. So therefore, we can e immediately say that we are going to figure out the coefficient of static friction, also known as mu sub s. As I've already mentioned, acceleration will be zero because it will be kept constant. So acceleration along the y-axis is zero and then the acceleration along the x-axis will also be zero so from there right away we know that it's going to be zero because there's no change in the state of motion and the original state of motion is at zero okay so let us proceed and the first step that we have to consider and we have to do is your free body diagram as always so free body diagram and just like the previous videos that we were working especially related to inclined plane let us draw our x and y coordinates the axis so this will be our y and this is our x y and then x and then the intersect will be our So let us transfer or let's draw the dot right here. And uh, similarly, just like what we have done in the past, a uh, couple of videos, let us draw the force of gravity or the weight that is acting on uh, the body or the block. And then, of course, the normal force, which belongs to the y-axis, located the y-axis, which is like this. So this is our normal force. And then the tendency is for the object to move downwards. So our force of friction. is upward force of friction static friction and also we have the applied force f which is along the same axis as our force of friction so now we have this as our as our free body diagram indicating all the actual forces acting on the body. Does that include our components? And uh, so routine as part of our solution is to redraw this, is to redraw our free body diagram with the necessary components. In our case, we have our F of G, which is our force of gravity or weight, which is equivalent to mass, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, as we're talking about inertial mass. 
We also have our x and y coordinates. So let's draw this one right here. So this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis. This is still our y-axis. And here's our x-axis. Then let's draw the different forces along the x-axis, which is our force of friction. That is static friction since it's not moving. And then we have our force, the applied force. And then we have our normal force along the y-axis and at this point let us consider our dotted lines to represent the components of the force of gravity and for our f sub x we all know that this will be f of g or f of gx is simply our sine theta or we can just say that this is also equivalent to mg sine theta and then for our y-axis f of gy is simply equivalent to f of g cosine theta equals mass times g cosine theta and this is all because your angle is measured with respect to the y-axis and not according to, or with respect to the x-axis. Further, let us draw the final free body diagram that we will draw. And this means that we have our force of gravity along the x-axis, which is right here. So that is f of gx, which is mg sine theta. And then we have those two forces. Static friction, which is mu s multiplied by the normal force. We have the applied force along the x-axis. And then we also have our normal force. And another force acting along the x-axis or y-axis is our f of g y which is also equivalent to mass times g cosine of that angle theta oops so you can see all right here okay so let me just zoom out again And let us proceed with analyzing the forces acting along the y-axis, which is the summation of forces along the y-axis is equivalent to mass multiplied by the acceleration along the y-axis. Different forces acting along the y-axis, which upward is positive, which means that you have our normal force minus the component of the force of gravity along the y-axis and then we have mass multiplied by the acceleration, which is zero. Then we can say that the normal force minus mg cosine theta is equivalent to zero. Since we are interested with the normal force as we always use it to figure out uh, the friction force, so we want our normal force to be once to be on one side of the equation, making it that the that the normal force is simply equivalent to the y component of our force of gravity or weight, which is mg multiplied by cosine theta. Now let's analyze different forces 
acting along the x-axis. Summation of forces along the x-axis is equivalent to mass multiplied by the acceleration along the x-axis. But since we all know that before and final, there's not going to be any change in velocity. And that means that that is going to be zero in terms of our acceleration. So anything going to the right is positive. Anything going to the left is negative. So we have our force, the applied force F plus force of friction. But this time it's static friction minus Fgx or the X component of the force of gravity or weight of the object equivalent to the mass of the object multiplied by zero which is the acceleration of the object so now we have force plus mu s multiplied by fn minus mg that's x so this will be sine theta equals zero so we have f plus mu s multiplied by fn which is mg cosine theta minus mg sine theta equals zero. Now we all know that this two, this thing is common to both of them. So we can just say that that is plus mg And this will give us mu s times cosine theta minus okay so do not put those uh, parentheses here so that's minus sine theta equals zero so if I want to solve for my f, then all I have to do is move this to the other side of the equation, giving me that the force is simply equivalent to mg. Okay, so it's supposed to be negative, but what I'm going to do is to just change it as I move to the other side. If I move negative to the other side of the equation, I will just divide both or multiply both sides by negative one. So it will still be positive, but this time we have to change each one of them. So this is going to be positive. And that will be positive sine theta minus mu sine a uh, mu sub s which is the coefficient of static friction cosine theta so here is the answer for question letter a so this is for letter a f is mg multiplied by sine theta minus mu s or the coefficient of friction uh, coefficient of static friction cosine theta okay now let us solve for mu sub s so what will be the best equation to use for mu sub s i would say why don't we use this equation so use this equation and then from there, let's derive the value of mu sub s depending on the value of f. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to get another sheet of paper so we have enough space to write.
again we will use this so we will use this equation general equation mu s okay, mu s Yes, mu s mu s and let us proceed so this still this will be f plus the coefficient of static friction multiplied by fn minus mg sine theta equals zero so all we need to do, okay, so let me just put this one aside and zoom it in so you could see it, okay, so it's easier to see. So I need to have my, my value with the coefficient of static friction to be by itself on one side of the equation. So let's leave this one right here, mu s f n, and then let's move the other variables to the other side of the equation. So if this is negative, if we move it to the other side of the equation, this will turn out to be positive, mg sine theta. And this is positive, so you have to subtract the value of f. Okay. Now, this is your mu s multiplied by the normal force. But we only need to know, need to figure out our coefficient of static friction. So therefore, let's divide both side of the equation by the normal force okay normal force so if I'm gonna go back and zoom out a bit so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna zoom out and we all know that the value of Fn is mg cosine theta so let's use that value and plug it in over here as your Fn so the coefficient of static friction is simply mg sine theta minus f over mg cosine theta. So this will be our answer for letter A. So this is letter A, and I earlier I said this is letter A. No, it's not. It's letter B. So this is our answer for section B. What is your force? Here we're trying to figure out the coefficient of friction.